had uh, read that one of your reasons uh, for writing uh, was to get yourself out of poverty. Um, you were you were eager to to make uh, to make some money with writing. At what point, while you were writing, did it, did did it did it become clear to you that oh, I really could make a living doing this? You know, I still sometimes have my doubts about it. It's I don't think the doubts ever go away. And, and, and esteemed audience, don't do like what I did, where you're like, oh my God, I, I, I'm broke, I have to write a book. But it's what happened. I had, um, I had had a child, my daughter who just turned 17 was a baby, and I had written this nonfiction book, and I suddenly found that I couldn't sort of make my living the way I normally had, which was traveling around and re reporting stories. And I was, I was broke, and so I remember sort of asking someone like asking my agent at the time I said do you have any things any ghostwriting things anything I can do and she she had a young adult novel and she said well I have this young adult novel that needs a ghostwriter but you'd be better off writing it yourself and of course I'd spent my entire you know most of my career writing for 17 writing about young people and for young people so when she said that the idea just clicked and I think within four days I'd written like the first you know 25 percent of my first young adult novel which is called Sisters Insanity so you know, I wrote a couple of other books under pseudonym and didn't make a living. And then when If I Stay started to, you know, become such a success, I think then I realized, OK, maybe I can I can sort of give up some of the other things that I was doing. I was teaching. I was doing magazine editing. I was still writing for magazines. So, so sort of slowly I let that up. But I, I will tell you, I don't think there's ever a moment in time, even after your your book gets turned into a film where you're like, I'm sitting on easy street. I mean, that's that's writing. It's it's you know, one book can be beloved and huge, and another book maybe doesn't do as well. So I don't know that I've gotten to that point yet, where I'm just like, I can do this for my living. Even though I have been a you know a full time author now since you know 2009 or so. See, I had expected <laughs> to tell me that you're you're you've arrived at the promised land. You've got. <laughs> There is a promised land, I, and I, I honestly think maybe there shouldn't be. You know, I think that every time I write a book, I, I have that doubt that I'm going to be able to do it, and that, that I'm going to be able to take the idea and, and, and get it to where it needs to be. And I've learned that that's part of the process, and it's part of what keeps you honest and makes sure that for me, that the work is as good as it needs to be. And sometimes it means putting books away for, for years because they're just not ready. You know, I can't seem to find my way with a certain book. And I used to think I was throwing all these books away, but what's happened is there's all these books that I started years ago. Frankie and Bug, I started in 2013. We Are Inevitable, which came out in June. I started in, you know, 2018 and, or 2016. And so you, I write books and then I think, oh, these are no good and they leave them on my hard drive. But then I come back to them at a time where I've had some distance from them and I'm ready to do it. And so I think, Without those doubts, without that fear, maybe I would I would have lower standards for myself. I'm not sure. Well, at this point, do you have an estimate on how many uh, how many books are in some form of gestation that we can hopefully look forward to at some point? I mean, this has been a big year because I had I had We Are Inevitable, which came out in June. I have Frankie and Bug, which, as I mentioned, has been in gestation for like eight years and it's coming out in October. And I'm thrilled about that. And I'm just finishing up um, a revision of, of, a, of an adult novel that will, you know, be in a couple of years. And then there's, yeah, there's like a, two or three other things. I have, an, I have a new middle grade that I've started drafting. So um, some of them are things that are on the hard drive and some of them are things that, um, you know, are new ideas. Do you keep like uh, an idea journal someplace or a file of just thoughts that, hey, maybe I'll come back to this later and it will be a book or? My idea journal is more like the first 10,000 words of a novel that I'm like, this is great, I'm gonna do it. And I sit down, I'm all hot straw and I start writing. And then I, you know, I lose steam or I, or I don't love it as much or I go back and look at them like, Ugh. or something else. It's like a horse race. Something else pulls ahead. So that really is my idea journal. My my hard drive has, you know, so many different ideas. You know, sometimes it really is just like a five page idea that I had for something. And I wish going back to our, the beginning of our conversation, I wish I could write a book a month, a book a week 
a book every three months, but I can't keep up with myself. I can't make it as much as I want to do it at that pace. Yeah, I can't either. I, I'm, I'm deeply envious of those who can, because it's just not within my skill set. Yeah. Like I'm reading Victoria Schwab, I'm reading, finally reading The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue, which not only is she incredibly prolific, but her writing and her world building is incredible. And it's just the way some people's brains work. So bless them. I'm envious as well. And I'm, but I'm also grateful because we get to read what they create. 